This is my Mothman shelf. Here on the top shelf we have some art by Andy Finkel, the Mothman Prophecies movie, the Eyes of the Mothman documentary, and also a signed copy here. We have a skeleton of a bat, and here is a sock monkey from the West Virginia State Penitentiary in Moundsville. We have books by Jeff Wamsley here, and then books by Gray Barker, John Keel, and then uh, Lauren Coleman. Uh, here is a Rosemary Ellen Galley book right there, Monsters of West Virginia. Uh, this book right here is what introduced me to the Devil's Tea Tables. These are the those are the rock formations we have here in West Virginia. This book is more of a children's book of different monsters and ghosts. There's uh, the Greenbrier Ghost, there's the Flatwoods Monster, there's the Interpretation of the Mothman, Apple Devils. And then here we have various other table books like Strange West Virginia Monsters, uh, American Monsters. These are the books that I originally got from the library when I first found out about Mothman. I've since purchased them for my collection. These two books right here, The Mothman Files and Return of the Mothman by Michael Nost, those books are fictional books made up from scratch, not they're not folklore or intended to be real claims of anything, they're just, uh, you know, fiction. This right here is pretty much the only Flatwoods book, unless you count uh, Lauren Coleman's Mothman Other Curious Encounters book right here, because the first chapter of that book is pretty much what introduced me to the Flatwoods monster. It's got an entire chapter on it. Yeah. So yeah, this is a really good book. It's one of the first few Mothman books I read. I would definitely recommend it. I think every house needs at least one copy of this book, and also every house needs at least two copies of the Mothman Prophecies, while well, I have two. Uh, I plan to collect every cover variant of the Mothman Prophecies, because it's a very important book. And a lot of these books are signed, too. Uh, these Jeff Wamsley books are signed. This Cryptozoology A through Z book is signed by Lauren Coleman. This is signed by the author and also one of the witnesses. Here we have a book about the state penitentiary where I got this monkey here. Yeah, all these books are by the same author, Sherry Brake. Uh, these are also signed. I got a lot of these books either from the Mothman Museum, during the Mothman Festival from the vendors, or online. Here's some more Andy Finkel art. I really appreciate the way he draws Mothman because he makes sure that it has no head and no arms, which is uh, more accurate to what the witnesses described. Here I have some business cards. Mothman Historian, themothman.wikia.com, and on Twitter at the Mothman Wiki. Got some toxic waste back there, in reference to the TNT area where much of the sightings took place. Right here we have some various comic books. Uh, a lot of these are signed. Coloring books down here, these are signed. And then we have a stuffed Mothman here. Once again, accurate shape. No arms, no head. In the back here we have some prominent UFOologists and cryptozoologists. These three up top are the ones you really need to know. John Keel, Gray Barker, Mary Heyer, and then uh, back there, Ivan T. Sanderson. He's a cryptozoologist. This, these are UFOologists. John Keel is, of course, the author of The Mothman Prophecies. Mary Heyer was a newspaper reporter in Point Pleasant. John Keel dedicated his book to her. So she's a very important figure in the Mothman folklore. She wrote a lot of the articles about Mothman. She had a newspaper column, uh, Where the Waters Mingle. And she also claimed to encounter the legendary Men in Black. John Keel was genuinely trying to figure out what was going on. He was very ahead of his time. Gray Barker was very much of his time. Gray Barker, he's more of a hoaxer, really. He kind of committed a few hoaxes and uh, kind of wrote his book just for financial gain. But he's interesting. See some of his books right here? Everything you need to know about Gray Barker is on the dedication page of this book, The Silver Bridge. Because this book is about the, the Silver Bridge collapse that happened in 1967. And was the first book about the subject of the Silver Bridge. Uh, 46 people died, and uh, guess who we dedicated the book to? To the bird creature. Classic Gray Barker right there. Everything you need to know about his character in that line. And uh, Gray Barker was also a citizen of Braxton County which is where the Flatwoods Monster sighting took place. See this book right here. Flatwoods Monster. Autographed by the writer there. See? And there's uh, Freddie May. He's one of the witnesses. So that's my book collection there. Get on to the next shelf. 
We've got miniature Flatwoods Monster here. A mug that says Keep Appalachia Scary. Flatwoods Monster Coaster. And then Mothman Coaster. Then we have the ceramic Flatwoods Monster Lantern Cover. This can actually be purchased in Flatwoods. It was made in the 1970s for a fundraiser. And then a local to Flatwoods actually continues to make them. Uh, they're handmade in Marietta, Ohio and sent over to stores in Flatwoods. Here we have some more Andy Finkel art. Gray Mothman there. Black Mothman there. Another stuffed Mothman there. These little miniature things actually got at the Mothman Festival. Here's the Mothman one. And then we have different patches. This is Mothman search team from the museum. And if you look at the bottom, it is 11-15-1966. That is the date of the original sighting. Got a Batman-inspired Mothman thing there. Mothman pin. This is a really great one. John Keel fan club. West Virginia pin. 50th anniversary Mothman. Another thing like that. Here's another patch, Mothman, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Mothman Squadron. You can see they're over the Silver Bridge there. It's snowing in December. And here's another one. Kind of like a Batarang. Here we have Cryptozoology Tracking Society. Flatwoods Monster. Alien Air Force. I Heart Point Pleasant pin. Got Mothman Mug there. West Virginia State Penitentiary mug there. Mothman energy drink. Here's a black 57 Chevy. It is the car the original witnesses were driving during their first sighting on November 15th, 1966. Uh, the witnesses were Linda Scarberry, Roger Scarberry, Steve and Mary Mallet. Here is Mothman statue from the Mothman Museum. Behind it we have Fate magazines featuring John Keel's writing. Got Mothman on the cover there. That is that shelf. Then we have historical photos of the Silver Bridge Collapse from December 15th, 1967. So that is my Mothman shelf. Over here we have the West Virginia Bulletin Board of Strangeness, Flatwoods Monster 1952, marked with green pins, was seen here in Flatwoods, in the center of the state of West Virginia. So that's Flatwoods in Braxton County. Then Injured Cold 1966, marked with blue pins, seen here in Parkersburg in Wood County. Then we of course have Mothman 1966. That was in Point Pleasant, Mason County. All these red pins are Mothman sightings. Uh, this white one is where Bandit the Dog disappeared, and this other white one is where he reappeared. Then we had the Men in Black, marked by black pins. Here we have a full list of all the sightings. Flatwoods Monster, Mothman, Injured Cold, Men in Black. There's the link to the Mothman wiki. And there's my business card again. Then we have this little map of monsters in America. All these little dots represent the different monsters. There's Mothman right there. It's interesting that most of the monsters are located in this side of the country. I've actually had this bulletin board remade and donated to the Cryptozoology Museum, which is run by Lauren Coleman. He's the one that made this book. Another thing on the board here is the yellow pins. These are for interesting locations. This right here is Moundsville, the state penitentiary that I mentioned before. That's its location right there on the Panhandle in Marshall County. Then right there in Weston, Lewis County, that is the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Then down here in Mercer County is Lake Shawnee, which is an abandoned amusement park. If you look across the state, you'll see a lot of locations with Native American names. Right here we have Chief Cornstock, that's in Mason County. He's the one that they say cursed the area. You can find his monument in Point Pleasant. And then over here, once again, Greenbrier, where the Greenbrier ghost is. See Cornstalk right there above it. And there are a lot of Native American burial grounds, which they call mounds. So here in Moundsville, it's where it gets its name. And then of course, Lake Shawnee is a burial ground. And then there is uh, Candom Park, which is in a burial ground. There are some schools located on a burial ground. Yeah, the Battle of Point Pleasant took place right there. Some people tie the Native American Thunderbird mythology back to Mothman. So yeah, very interesting when you look at the, the location names. 
So that is the West Virginia Bulletin Board of Strangeness. It is an ongoing project. I add to it as I find things out. Right here above my bed is a Mothman poster. I am Mothman, it says. Very interesting artist interpretation there. Mothman with a head, arms, and moth-like wings. Not very accurate to the witnesses' descriptions, but still very cool looking art. You can kind of see that it's inspired by Frank Frazetta's art of Mothman. If you look right here, this is John Keel's Mothman Prophecies book. This is a variant cover. This is art by the legendary Frank Frazetta. And uh, yeah, you can look at that to the giant moth butterfly wings and the head and the arms. Very comic book-esque. This definitely inspired that poster over there. And of course, Bob Roach's Mothman statue. On the side of the shelf here is some Mothman art. Very comic book-esque, not very accurate with the hands and the head there. Vacation Point Pleasant, Wild and Wonderful West Virginia, that's my favorite slogan for the state. They changed it to West Virginia Open for Business, but I much prefer Wild and Wonderful. Down here we have yet another more comic book Mothman. See uh, Thunderbird there, more Owl Man there, same image there. I like this interpretation a lot better. I like these weird eye things, I don't even know what those are, but they're interesting. Here's a really cool poster. Features the 57 Chevy once again, Mothman flying over, then November 15th, 1966, probably the most important date in West Virginia folklore. And here's my favorite, this one right here. Uh, it's based on those old pulp novels or horror comics. You can see Mothman sneaking up behind someone as they're opening the doors to a TNT area bunker. Very moth-like Mothman, but still very horror and cool. I've actually been to the TNT area outside of one of these bunkers and these doors like this. On the other side here we have more Mothman comic art. Here is the State Theater. Mothman's perched up on the sign. It says welcome to the Mothman Festival. People running away. And Men in Black right there. I've actually been to this theater and watched the guest speakers inside during the festival. This is another one of my favorites. It perfectly illustrates everything about Point Pleasant. It's where history meets mystery. Here we have Chief Cornstalk. And then here we have the Men in Black, Flying Saucers, and the Mothman. That's a very good image of the Mothman there. Even though it does have arms, it still has the, the shape you want to have. And there we have Fort Randolph there, located in Point Pleasant. And then the North Power Plant, which was uh, torn down in the 90s. That's very interesting. Two locations, a history location and a mystery location. Here is a colorized version of the same photo on the other side. It's 7 Chevy, Mothman. See the red eyes now. Red-eyed creature reported in West Virginia. Two Point Pleasant couples told police Wednesday their car was followed at about midnight by a bird-like creature, six to seven feet tall, with red eyes and ten-foot wingspan. Note that they said bird-like creature. It's a very important detail because Mothman is not a moth or in any way moth-like. The name actually comes from a newspaper editor in Ohio. It was based on Batman from the 1966 TV show starring Adam West. So yeah, this Batman is what inspired the Mothman's name. And then here we have a decolorized version of the same photo in the back. Mothman, Fall of 66. Vacation Point Pleasant, West Virginia. With his red eyes aglow and his white wings spread wide, you are helpless below, looking up to the night. Is he Chief Cold Stomp's go?
beneath the shadow of days and numbers one and all. There's no rest here between the mountains and the meadow. We know it's so for now.